Uh, good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for uh, November 18th of 2022. Uh, gosh, yeah, sorry, I'm late for the event if you're here live. Um, and if you are here live, uh, please do drop your questions in the questions tab. And otherwise, um, if this is your first time, welcome. I know we have a lot of first time visitors here recently. And if you are watching on YouTube after the fact, you are welcome to sign up for our 50 Questions Friday, which is our newsletter at twistedsage.com, just at the bottom of the page. And so, hey, Samson, Kendall, Linda, Christine, hey, Peter from Texas. Yeah, I always appreciate everybody that shows up here because... We have some phenomenal people here on chat. So if you are here on chat live, um, gosh, people share a lot of great things and help answer questions along the way. So I am just pulling up some questions from the internet because uh, we had quite a few. And yeah, we chose to do 50 questions Friday today again, as next Friday is um, the day after Turkey Day here in the United States. and the day before my birthday of my grand 50th birthday. So I'm going to go find some hot springs. So I won't be available next Friday. Um, yeah, I know 50, right? I only got 118 years left in this meat suit. So let me see. I will see if I can find some of the questions. And um, otherwise, I guess I could do some announcements first here, too. Is, uh, hey, Emily, hey, Connie from Maine. Mount Desert Island. That sounds like a cool place. A desert island. Um, so anyway, hey, Christine from Oz. So um, announcements. We have, gosh, we have a new product. Well, it might not be. It's not a tool, but we have the 2023 product discount calendar that we're just releasing today. So you can check that out at twistedsage.com. It's the 2023 calendar. And so basically this calendar is um, full of coupon codes and free tools. So every month, so the calendar itself has some really phenomenal pictures. The energetics comes through. Um, and they're beautiful. They're not just product pictures. They're all pictures of product in nature, like in Sedona and the arches and things like that. Whenever I go to take pictures of products with me, even have one of, um, at some of the temples in Mexico. So anyway, um, this product calendar, basically every month you get a free product with purchase, like, um, the, the wisdom wand keychain the small wisdom wand uh is the january product just to kind of give you a heads up and basically you purchase ten dollars or more and you get that free product so that totals like over 450 bucks worth of free products and then also every month there are coupon codes whether like the gaia sphere buy one get one fifty percent off or else there's um, other percentage off codes and so anyway, this calendar, it's pretty fantastic, phenomenal. It's spiral bound. Um, we're hoping to pick them up at the printers today, but they're 79 bucks and we have just a limited number of them. And we looked at it and the minimum amount of savings if you use them to order is like uh, $1,200. And that's just if you order a minimum amount of, of things. So if you are into the tools um, and into some free tools for a small monthly purchase of 10 bucks a month, then this is a great value calendar. Um, let's see. Other announcements. Oh man, sorry to say, but our cell phone tabs had to go up in price. Um, we were waiting on, I talked last week that we have the, the new packaging with the UPC barcode on it and all that good jazz. Um, but it's uh, we were waiting to do the time studies before we got these out, and our new time studies were showing that man, we were 
we're basically giving those away at the price that we had. So we did have to adjust our prices. Man, everything has gone up so much. You know, reminds me of a meme I saw on Facebook where somebody is like, hey, I love the new $1 bill. And it's a $10 bill. Yeah, it's, geez, seems like that's kind of the way things are right now. But, um, you know, and we're, we've always tried to keep the tools as, as low price as possible, and we will continue to do so. Um, but anyway, so let me go to the questions tab. Actually, let's go into the heart space. So with this video and all of those who are watching it here and now we create this beautiful sacred container where we all hold space our light is here holding space we are connected soul to soul heart to heart not junk to junk and belief to belief and this sacred space that we hold is healing for all who choose to step in here and so let's create the sacred container by going into the heart space and this is for anyone who watches this in the future so just closing your eyes putting your attention to the physical heart imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth that beautiful sun crystal sun within the earth the heart of gaia no matter your belief system the heart of the earth breathing in that light that energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart and just making that deep connection with mother earth as she just envelops you and she is there in service and assistance by simply helping you release things that no longer serve you so you can choose to let go of that bad day, those emotions, that situation that keeps circulating in the mind. Whatever it is, just allow it to be gone and allow the earth to simply absorb it. She is a powerful, powerful transformer. The second breath that we take in this Trinity breath is connecting to you as creator God, your soul, breathing in that light of you as that powerful, magnificent being that you are. And it's actually already in the heart. Taking in that deep breath, expanding your light. The third breath is where you imagine connecting your light to the light of the earth and the light of the earth to you. And it brings you into the human here now moment, grounded, connected, and standing in your light. Plus it moves you from the head into the heart space. So that was the long form version of going into the heart space. You can make it quick and easy if you wish. You can do it in one breath. But anyway, sacred space, the heart, and we are all here holding space for each other. And it is absolutely beautiful. So let's do some questions. Um, this question is from Lorraine Lee, who uh, says that it's three o'clock in the morning in Australia right now. And so she'd rather send in the question, which I don't blame you. Um, she's interested in the elementals. I have been making hedicas based on the measurements given by dancing with water. I was wondering if there are specific measurements to be used when creating the other elemental shapes. So when, when we make our elementals, like the, the Hedica, the, the, the symbol of the water, uh, the consciousness of water, the Hedica elemental, we do use sacred measurements in those, but you do not have to use sacred measurements when you're creating these elemental symbols. It brings through a little bit of extra energetics, but in true reality, you can draw a Hedica symbol in the dirt. And it is, it's basically like... Mm, I guess you could use the word evoking, but it is basically bringing in, it, it's, it's bringing your attention, your awareness to the consciousness of the water. And so it comes in through that symbol. So these symbols, when you create them, whether they're out of copper wire or pipe cleaners or whatever, it's actually the symbol and your intent and attention 
that is bringing in that elemental, whether it is of fire, the chiselle, or ether, or Hedica the water. We actually used to make little water bottle stickers with the Hedica on it, and it would actually bring through the energetics of Hedica. And every time you look at that sticker, it just brings through that energetics even more. So um, you do not need to use sacred measurements of your wires when you are making a Hedica out of copper, but it does add a little bit of extra energetics. Um, the measurement that Dancing with Water probably gives you is, um, they call it the earth resonance it's actually the 333 megahertz um, measurement and we do have a website where we give a lot of the measurements out which is um, sacredmeasures.com and in there if you go to a page it's an old website and it's not updatable um, so it's not been updated forever but there's a page on there called templates and you'll find the STU, the standard TO2 econ unit. The STU is a measurement that you can cut something to a fraction of that measure and it produces an energetic. And um, that's the one that I suggest using to make your elementals just because either that or that 333 megahertz, the one that Dancing with Water calls the earth resonance. And the 333 is also on that page so let's see and we had some other questions here too um gosh and this one is from a while back okay and this one's from michael um thoughts on placing supplements inside of a tensor ring so any tensor ring is going to raise the frequency and vibration of whatever you put inside of it. But if you use the wisdom rings or the alchemist rings that we create, it is bringing in the consciousness of that supplement as well. Um, and then also these new Betar coils are phenomenal for putting supplements on. These ones right here, I always carry one in my pocket. Um, these, when you put a supplement onto here, it is raising the potentials of what that supplement can do for you. And you might find if you muscle test that you might even need a less of the supplement. So um, tensor rings in general are great, but using the wisdom rings, the beta coil or the alchemist rings are phenomenal for supplements. Next question. Can tensor rings be used to clear crystals or charge them? And again, any tensor ring can clear the outside surface of a crystal. So crystals um, on the outside surface is where you can affect them, kind of like water. They take on energies, thought forms, um, just things from the environment. And they can hold them, and that's why you want to clear a crystal. That's why people put them in salt baths or put them out in the moonlight or smudge them, whatever. It's basically their intention that's clearing that crystal. But a crystal deep down inside holds some core essence and information. That's the consciousness of the crystal. So like the Lemurian crystals that you see that people advertise that have little, um, little etchings on them, that they're like little libraries that contain all this information. Well, again, going to either a Betar coil, um, the Rainmaker plate that we create is a great one, as well as the Wisdom Rings or the Alchemist sets. Um, you know, and again, an entire alchemist set of the three rings contain the energetics of the wisdom ring. Um, any of these four items there um, will actually bring in the consciousness of the crystal more, kind of like what we talked about with the oils or the or with the um, the previous question about supplements. It brings in a higher consciousness. And so basically it's allowing that essence, that internal, so it's cleaning and clearing, obviously, yes, the outside part of it, but it is also as it charges them, which is part of the question, is that it is bringing in more of their essence, more of their divine embodiment into the crystal, more of their consciousness. And that raises the frequency and vibration of the crystal and can also activate other potentialities within the crystal and bring more through. So, um, again, using, using some of these newer tools is phenomenal with crystals. 
Uh, thoughts on Organite and how it may work together with Tensor technology in the same room or home space. So Organite is it Organite's pretty cool. Yay, I love the puzzle pieces that Samson gifts me. I got these everywhere. And you start gifting these out. So Organite is, um, it depends on the maker of Organite. Most Organite I will not allow into my house or my studio because I don't like the feel of it because it is, um, it depends on the person, their consciousness level and their intentions. And so it really depends on the maker. But the beautiful thing about using tensor rings with Organite is, is that it will simply ensure that it is all beneficial. And tensor rings and Organite and tensor rings and crystals, they all amplify each other. They work together. So you know, I totally suggest using a tensor ring with any piece of Organite that you have in your home because then it shifts it. It, it shifts the energy of it, but then it also amplifies. Uh, let's see. And again, if you have questions, please do drop them here on the questions tab and we will definitely get them here in a couple more questions. Can two tensor rings of different frequency interfere with one another if in proximity or in the same area or room or space? So no, actually, when you start to bring in different energetics of tensor rings, they, they work together. Um, so let's say we have out of the wisdom set, we have the divine I am you bring the chalice together with it and where they intersect, they begin to create a whole new field with each other. Right now, this one has a separate field than this one, but when you bring them together, even intersecting or totally with nested with one another, they are bringing through a different energetic. They're bringing through each of them, but then they usually create something that is greater than the two. And when we put all three of these various, um, the harmonizer, the chalice and the divine I am energetics together, which is the alchemist rings, these three together create the wisdom ring. Um, so using your tensor tools together, you know, I always say play with your tools because you will find different combinations of energies that are pretty fantastic and phenomenal. Uh, thoughts on having a second copper wire twisted to increase the field strength or potency? Eh, BS. I do not believe in using any more than one single wire in a tensor ring that's been folded over and brought together. This is the standard tensor ring. Um, when you start to add in two wires, fold them in half and twist them, then basically because you need the ends to connect um or else if if these ends of the tensor ring don't connect so here's our two ends we have a flow then that is going this way and this way it's a counter rotating vortex flow when you add in other wires and you create um you know rings that have two wires or four or whatever in them if the ends aren't connecting right it's like they short circuit. It's like there's a little bump as, as that energy doesn't flow smoothly, it flows around and it has to find its way in and, and it just creates. Now I'm not a fan of, of tensor rings that, you know, have more than a single wire doubled and used. There's a lot of people out there that make them and, you know, some of them do feel good, but a lot of them just, it's like, they're not even, you know, it's, it's, it's like some of them don't even create a field, um, beyond that field of intention. And so, um, simplicity is how I feel because really the true power and potency of a tensor ring is not here in the physical. When Slim Sperling was around, he would put the little copper balls on rings. He would electroplate them with silver and gold, um, intermixed and, you know, he was always trying to find a way to increase the potency of a ring. But in all reality, the true magic and the power and potency of a tensor field is in the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of the rings themselves, which we create here at Twisted Sage Studios. Um, you know, there's very few etheric templates out in out in the in the world of tensor rings. Um, let's see. 
next question and the last question here from um, email. Is it possible to use a larger tensor ring that can fit over feet and over leg for knee pain, etc.? And yes, you know, you can certainly get like the practitioner rings, the larger rings. Um, what we've always said is like a one inch golden fire ring is the same energetic field as a 29 inch golden fire ring. It's just that they're a larger field. But, you know, another thing, too, is that a heavier gauge ring versus a lighter gauge ring you feel the potency of it more from the heavy gauge ring because you feel it more in the physical, but yet they're creating the same energetic field. And that's the same with a different size of ring is that the different size of rings are going to create the same field. So if you're working with your knee, let's say you don't necessarily need a ring that you bring up over the knee. You can use a smaller ring that you simply tape onto the knee. But what I would actually suggest is the wisdom wand. <laughs> I finally found my, my fun coil bracelet as I love the wisdom wands. The wisdom wand is the tool that I would suggest for working with knee pain, ankle pain, any pain. The wisdom wand is something that I feel every person on the planet should own. And we, we've left a, um, and we've left it on the website to, um, for quite some time we will of where I think it is you buy one, you get one 50% off and you buy two and you get one free because the wisdom wand is one that we feel is so phenomenal that we'd love to see those who can gift them to family and friends, strangers. Well, <laughs> if you feel super abundant. Okay. So that's all the questions from the internet. Let me put my phone on silence here. All right. So, and again, if you do have some questions, drop them in questions tab, but I will check here on chat first. Hey, thanks for a happy early birthday. Um, David, any discount codes for Black Friday? Yeah, we do our annual Black Friday event. So be sure to sign up for the newsletter and you'll get those. So that's kind of our, our big day of the year. Um, and some of our best sales over that, that time, uh, can you explain the energetics of the four inch Gaia sphere and how far does the field expand? Oh gosh. Um, so the Gaia spheres, depending on their energetics. So, you know, even a tensor field generator, the tensor field generator with the four rings, depending on the energetics, they expand farther or less like the, the harmony generator expands the farthest, um, where the golden fire only goes about half the distance, but the golden fire is working in more levels and layers. The golden fire is a lot stronger for EMF, um, and dense consciousness. You know, the harmony generator doesn't crossover ghost waywards or clear 5g millimeter waves things like that where the golden fire does but then when we get to the gaia spheres which have the six rings in them uh the gaia spheres are not they're they don't travel as far they don't create as large of a sphere of influence the gaia spheres are more about a personal space and that sacred space and that connection to the earth and also that connection heart to heart to everybody that is within its sphere of influence. So the Gaia spheres don't create such a huge sphere of influence as like the tensor field generators do, which go farther out. But the Gaia spheres are more heart based and grounding. Um, and as a matter of fact, the, we have, um, gosh, we're, we're bringing back our, our small one and a half inch Gaia spheres, both in silver and copper. They'll probably be out by the new year. I doubt if they'll be out and they won't be out for, um, for the holiday sale here, but for black Friday, but they will be out before, um, in December towards the beginning of December. And these ones are in that newer energy that they are in the wisdom or new energy and they're grounding you so much to the earth. They are basically the earth alchemy energetics is these are these new Gaia spheres. Um, so pretty excited about these one and a half inch Gaia spheres that'll be coming out again. Um, and let's see question from Marie. How is the Badar tensor ring for $21 different than 
other rings. So the little ring that's in here, the Badar coil ring, you can still use it for any application that you would a tensor ring. Um, we mainly are selling that one solo by itself so that anybody who has these Badar coils, because there are a lot of people out in the radionics field that own these already, that you can then add that ring to your pre-existing Badar coil. Because it's called the Badar coil with ring. This ring is different in that it is made very specifically for this Badar coil. Um, it is still the wisdom ring. So you can still get the wisdom ring energetics, which contains the energetics of all the rings that we've created before now. So everything that we've created builds upon each other. And then we have the wisdom ring. So this is a wisdom ring that's in the Badar coil, um, which the wisdom rings, as we've talked about, are pretty phenomenal. Um, and again, this is the lightest gauge ring that we sell. And so this lighter gauge ring, um, not, you know, you can still use it. Some suggested ways to use this light gauge ring would be around your supplements, um, essential oils. Um, basically, it's kind of one of those that you set it and you put something in and you just set it and forget it and let it just sit there and charge. And, um, you know, otherwise, it's really a light gauge ring. It's not something you want to carry in the pocket by itself. Um, you can use it with water. Again, it's just a smaller ring, but you can still use this around a water bottle. Um, you know, so and it's going to also work for EMF. So you can also get that ring and, um, you know, use it for EMF mitigation. So it's still, a, you know, it's still a ring that can be used for all the various purposes that you would, you know, any of the tensor fields. Uh, JR, will putting supplements, crystals, etc., inside the 23-inch wisdom ring be the same effect as the Badar ring? How long does it have to stay there? Yes. So when we made this Badar coil, and we see that it's so phenomenal because there's all these little packets of multicolored light that are within this field, and these are simply potentials. We really need to update the wisdom ring descriptions because when we made the Badar coil and and that the Badar coil with ring and we saw all those multicolor packets of potentials within that ring that also went into the wisdom rings i got one here in my pocket that i always carry carry to a three inch wisdom ring so this three inch wisdom ring is also bringing through all those little packets of higher potentials for whoever's using them. And then you use it with your water. And then not only is it working with your water and raising the frequency and vibration and higher consciousness of the water and all of that, but it is also working with your soul. And because those little packets of potentials are potentials for you, you put it with your water and it's bringing in the higher potentials of the water for you. Um, I think if you look back on our beta coil um, introduction on our 50 questions Friday, I explained that a little bit better and more in depth. Um, but yeah, so the 23 inch wisdom ring is going to still work this basically the same as the beta coil. To me, the Badar coil, it just has a little bit of a different field. And to me, it works faster because of this energy pump, because of the field that it produces. Um, so how long you need to set your water and supplements there is also dependent upon you. So you can just um, set them there and leave them. So like water. So what I mean by that answer is that... If you take your water and you put it inside of that 23 inch wisdom ring, it, you can let it sit there for about two hours and then it is going to, um, it's going to do all the work within that two hours, but you can also do the consciousness work, the energy work, the going into the heart space and inviting in the consciousness, the essence, the, the light of the water into the water while it's in that ring 
and you can shift it instantly versus letting it sit there for two hours. Otherwise, you can just let it sit there for two hours. Traditionally, the older tensor rings, um, you would have to let it sit there for four to six hours for it to physically restructure the water. Then when we created the, um, the Alchemist set of water rings, which this is, it took that down to about two to four hours. Um, then with the Wisdom ring um, and the Spadar coil, it takes it down to, uh, it takes it down to around two hours as well, unless you put your attention there. Um, so to walk you through that process, we actually have a meditation that we did. I, it was December of 2021 of 50 questions Friday. There was a water ring meditation. Um, and that one, you can, you can go through that meditation and that walks you through the process of basically holding that space to bring in the consciousness of water to physically restructure it instantly. So it is actually the consciousness of water that does the restructuring, the clearing, the balancing of the pH, all the stuff that happens within the tensor rings is because of the consciousness of water. So minimum of two hours to put your water in unless you do the meditation with it. Uh, Linda, when sleeping in the 26th century generation ring, does the column of energy extend throughout the house and beyond? Yes. So basically a tensor ring creates a column of light that goes for miles in all direction or just in this column. So out both sides of the ring. So it's like a flashlight. So out of the regeneration ring, that 26 inch ring, wherever you place it, yes, that column of light extends. Um, and then kind of like when you put it into a tensor field generator, instead of creating a column of light, then it's creating more of a sunshine effect. Um, and then some of the other tools like the Badar coil with the ring here, it doesn't extend for miles. It's creating more of a confined field, but it's, it's more potent within this field. Um, really take a drink of water here. JR, does the infinity bracelet have more different energy than the chalice bracelet? So, you know, because we've been, as the new energies have been coming in, we've really been switching up energies, and I really need to go through and rewrite most of the product descriptions for, for the energetics. Um, so the, the chalice bracelet, which is made out of that heavier gauge silver wire, it's the, the chalice, the HECA clasp. So that HECA clasp and the chalice energetics, um, that is the exact same base and foundation as the infinity bracelet. So the infinity bracelet, which is that solid silver, it's the 0.99 silver in that HECA clasp, and then it has an infinity built into it. And so that particular, um, that infinity bracelet has that base foundation of the chalice energy with the infinity was made in the divine I am energetics. So and in all actuality, I believe those infinities have actually been shifted into the wisdom energetics as I'm pretty sure that every one of the infinities we have now, whether they say it or not, are shifted into the wisdom energetics. Again, it's, um, you know, really started to because as I've been twisting the wire and over the past year that I've been going through that I was that I was going through all those deep dark dives, um, deep dark nights of the soul and all that stuff, I really had to step back and allow the master creator self that I am, the, the master builder aspect, the one that creates these higher dimensional tools, that soul aspect of me, that facet of me. I pretty much as the human had to step back any time that I twist wire at that time and just allow that aspect of my soul, that facet of my soul to come in to hold the space for whatever wire I was twisting. 
And I feel that a lot of these energetics have shifted too as we keep adding in more newer energetics into our etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspect of the tools that trickles down and goes into everything. For instance, when we first put in the chalice energetics about two years ago or so, that chalice energy, that crystal clear, pure consciousness light, it basically trickled down through all of the tools. That chalice energy is there in everything now. Um, and so I, I guess um, long story as always to answer your question here about the infinity bracelet is, is that um, it contains that chalice energetics as that base layer, but I believe it is also the wisdom energetics that's coming through that infinity. Oh. So, oh, hey, that's all the questions, huh? Yay. Let's see. Uh, Lisa Marie, can you please share more about what I briefly heard you say about going to a cemetery where there's a rod in the ground that keeps souls earthbound? I would like more clarity on the rod part. Like, what is it? So that was actually an old system that is no longer in place. So all the old grid systems um, have been dismantled and released by Gaia. And so that at the, at that time there was always a rod a steel rod or an obelisk that was put into a graveyard and it was kind of like the steeple for a church or the copper top of a state capitol building um that were connecting into those grid systems and so those grid systems that were connected to churches we're also connected to the cemeteries and basically that steel rod that was put into the cemetery would not only hold those earthbounds there in place, but it would also use them as batteries. It would, it would take their emotions because those old grid systems fed off of people's emotions, especially fear and any of the deeper deeper denser emotional fields that they carry and go waywards carry those fields just as a human same just the same um so so yeah you might still go to a cemetery and find an old steel rod or an old iron rod sticking up out of the ground in a cemetery but it's inert um they've all been cleared so you know and so yeah, any of the older stories that I've talked about prior to 2020, um, you know, that was in a whole different paradigm. That was in a different world, different creation that we lived in at that time. And that was the ending of the old creation was about 2020. And, um, you know, we're just seeing the, sh the echoes, the shadows of that as everything is being released of the old creation. And so, you know that the it's it's old world stuff old paradigm and it's not a part of where we're at now and you know it is kind of basically everything that we are releasing from the old paradigm is that it has no structure to it it has nothing holding it in place except for people and their beliefs and their attention and focus onto it you know and that's why a lot of those things of of the old um the old energies of things like um you know power and control and 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 the victim perpetrator mentality all of that stuff is really there's no structure holding that there anymore except for you know a large percentage of humanity but the more of us who step out of those old structures and we stand in our light in our heart grounded connected and just basically with our light, we are affecting all of that other 85, 90% of the populace. And um, so that's really all those who are here, that's what it, the true work is about, is about working with you and your light. And from there you affect 
you know, all of humanity and creation. Um, let's see. Question from Nika. Has there been any discussion of making a stand to hold the quantum grid points upside down so we can easily place them under a therapy table? A copper stand would be great. Huh, interesting. Um, no. Um, hmm, that's an interesting thought. I will certainly feel into that. I, you know, I still feel that placing your quantum grid point in an upright position, um, basically it expands. It expands to the size of, of the home or of the space that you're working in. So a quantum grid point, um, <clears throat> to me, you know, I feel that the best way to utilize that with your, um, you know, under your tables or beds um, or the chairs is just simply just place it on the ground and then, you know, of course, the quantum grid points, when they expand to the size of the the space that you're working within, whether it's the home or the room, you know, they'll they'll know because it's it's actually your consciousness that helps to create that. Um, but you put in the intention of what you want that space to be, what you want the flavor, what energetics of that sacred space that you would like your space to hold whether it is for healing, clearing, connectivity, um, whatever it is, um, you just put that intention when you place that grid point underneath of that table. Um, and I'll have to look more into that about placing it upside down because I'm, I'm really not sure how that works works because it to me you know because a lot of times when i go out and um and and i want to gorilla place you know place with uh without being noticed these grid points in places like you know uh for instance my uh my daughter has some uh siblings with her mom and they go to the, to that to that set of grandparents once in a while um, my my daughter's siblings do and um, I have actually gone there and take quantum grid points and flip them upside down and s drop them on the lawn and I'll just push them down into the soil so that they're pointed down uh, just because that's an easy way to drop them into the soil and then I'll just put a little bit of grass and gravel over top of them. So that's the way that I actually put those grid points in a lot of places that I want to be inconspicuous about it is I'll push them upside, I'll place them upside down and then I'll just stand on them and push them in with your foot. So like maybe if you go to someplace like, you know, one of the lawns in Washington, DC or wherever, and you want to be inconspicuous, just drop it on the ground and push it over and push it in with your heel and kick some dirt on it. Um, and that's the only time that I've ever utilized the quantum grid point upside down. Um, but I still feel just placing it right side up is absolutely perfect. But yeah, but you do what you feel with that. Oh my goodness. Totally, totally play with the tools, how you feel. Um, and I was just thinking about it too, uh, Nika, is that a tensor field generator works great because there is a square in there and you can put your generator in and you can put your quantum grid point in. If you feel to put it upside down, you can put it in there and there is your quantum grid point holder. Because then it's also, again, it's broadcasting even farther as well. Um, and I actually have a smaller tensor field generator, the two and a half inch golden fire that I have put a quantum grid point in and I've just always left it there. It just feels good. It goes to all of my shows when I do them and I have it it's there on the table. So I really like the quantum grid point inside of that two and a half inch golden fire generator. Um, and that's just kind of where I've left mine sitting. Um. <laughs> and thank you for the clarification and the feedback. So um, the question about the quantum grid point is that putting the quantum grid point on top of the head and you can feel it radiating down through. And that's fantastic. Um, oh my goodness. 
you know what? I might have to glue one of those on my motorcycle helmet. That's a freaking fantastic idea. Thank you. Because in my motorcycle helmet, I wear a halo. And a lot of times on the back of my motorcycle on the luggage rack, I'll have a, a pyramid, a copper pyramid. And I always carry a larger tensor ring with me. Um, but totally, I'm going to have to glue a quantum grid point on top of my helmet now. So thank you for that visual, Nika. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. So, um, let's see. I think that's everything, unless anybody has any other questions. Um, let's see. Trying to think if there was anything else. Uh, David, when's the next newsletter out? So, um, basically, we send out a newsletter anywhere from zero one two and up to three times a week just depending on what's going on so like here for the the holiday sales we'll be sending them out um we'll probably send one out here in the next couple of days i'm guessing maybe over the weekend for the um i don't know if we, i don't know if we have any other sales going on before black friday or not but um, we're, we're going to put a release out for this calendar that we have because I'm pretty, pretty excited about this calendar. We all are. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of artwork. And it's just a regular size, you know, 11 by 17 wall calendar that you flip the months on um, for 2023. And so that, I believe, will be our next newsletter that we have going out, which might be this weekend here. I'm not sure. Um but then otherwise we'll have a newsletter going out next week for our black friday event and yeah <laughs> well he puts quantum grid point on head <laughs> yay if i had one here i'd have one on my head too um i have a quantum grid point and a harmony generator with a small wisdom ring on the point and a double terminate lithium quartz in the sphere. <laughs> Yay. So yeah, you know, it's it's really amazing how, you know, we're just drawn to assemble the tools in certain ways. And so actually the, that's how the activator was born was everybody kept having these tools, a tensor field generator and a tensor ring and a coil and a headica. And everybody kept putting them all together in the generator and sending pictures and saying, hey, check this out. And finally, we were like, oh, wait, you know, maybe there is something to this. So we actually just made the activator, which is that ancient Atlantean tool. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. I'm hoping um, I'm hoping that we start doing some more meditations. I have um, a new microphone finally. And so I'm going to start trying to do some more meditations and things um also let's see we have we have a few products that have been out of stock that are coming back in um the the taurus the silver taurus pendant we we have some of those back in stock again um Let's see, question, would the Black Friday sale be better than the fire sale? No, you know, that fire sale that we had was an absolute emergency and we had to sell stock for well below what it cost to make it because the fire sale was because of, of some issues that we had with a non-government agency that pretends to be the government. And we had to come up with a lot of money and so we were selling everything that we owned below cost because either that or else we were going to have to close our doors. So you will never see that kind of sale ever again because um, it was a it was a huge sacrifice we had to make. So the the Black Friday sale was still usually um, you know the the holiday sales that we have are always of the the best the best percentages. Um, so anyway um let's see and what else oh yeah i also have um again if if you haven't heard i've been doing some new sessions 
And these sessions are about basically taking you as that master creator being who has been here in third density reality, creating everything in the old paradigm for soul growth and learning to, to amass wisdom and consciousness. Um, it is taking that creator you and stepping you out of your creation in third density reality throughout this universe, not just here. And stepping you into alignment with you as a master creator beyond third density reality. This simply then is going through and doing the old work that we used to do of going through and clearing, you know, the lifetimes and the old contracts, unfinished business and the programs and the belief structures and traumas and all that stuff. And basically turning all of that into wisdom and light. And then as you amass all this consciousness of light, you step in as master creator, you. And um, that's it's been a pretty profound, powerful thing that we do in these 20-minute sessions. Um, so anyway, that's something that I'm offering um, now to... Uh, it's under twistedsage.com and then it's up top of the healing sessions or healing sessions or distant sessions. And you'll find my sister and I both there with, uh, with, with what we offer. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty powerful. So anyway, that's still something that, um, is available there. And thank you all for being here. And, um, yeah, I, I guess there's so much more I'd like to say, but I don't know what it is. So I guess we will just see you in a couple of weeks after Turkey Day. So have a great Turkey Day if you celebrate that. Um, whatever you celebrate, Thanksgiving, um, Gratitude Day. And we will see you in December. All right. I wish you all health, wealth, abundance, and joy. Take care.